Northeast Baltimore is an excellent example of how communities and society was changing in uh, post-World War II Baltimore, uh, Baltimore and the nation. Uh, the, you really get to see how the architecture changes. Uh, and if you look at it through from the 19th century to the 20th century, we go from very small row house, highly dense neighborhoods to the detached uh, uh, neighborhoods, uh, maybe 10 houses per, uh, per acre. Um, and then you start to see, for example, uh, the porch front, which was very popular in the 1920s. And after the 19, in the 1950s, the porch front stops, uh, builders stop uh, constructing porch fronts on their houses. Cape Cods don't have porch fronts. So you start to see change or transformation of the architecture. And you just start to see um, the architecture along Hartford and Bel Air roads are changing drastically. A lot of the signage becomes bigger because people are in cars and not in streetcars. A lot of the retail and, and uh, buildings become more automobile oriented, trying to capture the automobiles going home. Many of the buildings along the Hartford and Bel Air Road corridors are uh, right from the mid-19th century farm village era. Uh, Markley's Hotel, for example, right now I think is the thrift store. Uh, but that was a hotel. That was a not only a hotel, but it was a general store where you could almost buy anything. It also turned into be a farm uh, supply store, so you would also to go buy your canned food, but you would also buy your farm supplies. And then if you were a, f a farmer trucking your produce to the, uh, to the market houses in Baltimore, you may want to stop there for the night on your way back. Northeast Baltimore is a wonderful collection of 1920s suburban type housing. And the suburban type housing really become in, uh, uh, can be grouped into four categories. One of them is the bungalow, the other one is the four square, then you sort of have the colonial revival uh, uh, looking bungalow that turned into the uh, Cape Cod. The basic development pattern of all suburbs ha has usually been the builders would build houses and then following those houses of course would be the churches. So, you know, after one or two years and almost even concurrently, churches were being developed along with a lot of the houses and developments that were being built there. People uh, really, uh, their houses of worship were very uh, near and dear to them and it was part of their social as well as their spiritual well-being. Parks play an incredible role in Northeast Baltimore, not only as having some of the great Baltimore parks such as Clifton Park and Herring Run, but also in terms of really trying to bring the park and the park aesthetic into the neighborhood. And most of the ways that they did that was to follow the Olmsted principle of, of building and creating boulevards. Uh, the Alameda, for example, is one of those boulevards. Uh, 33rd Street, uh, Walther Avenue, and even parts of Northern Parkway are some of these boulevards. Just to try to create a green open space that would uh, invite uh, the country to be part of your front yard. Homestead, uh, which was really planned in about 1852, is one of the earliest, if not the earliest, planned suburb in Baltimore. There are other neighborhoods in Baltimore that can make that claim. Mount Washington, 1853, uh, and even uh, Franklin Town, which was laid out in 1834 but never really developed. Homestead, but was developed really to try to capture a lot of the city workers, but try to bring them into a more uh, country uh, environment for uh, their neighborhoods. The future of Northeast Baltimore and what really excites me about it is the, f is the neighborhoods are really embracing its wonderful historic architecture. Uh, these incredibly high quality houses that were built with wood floors, with stained glass windows, with porch fronts that everybody loves to sit on are, are being reclaimed and they're finding that once these houses are restored, uh, the quality and the value of these houses really come alive.